The Falcons versus Steelers week one matchup perfectly showcases every bet the Falcons are making in 2024. You are Locked On Falcons, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, to another illustrious episode of the Locked On Falcons podcast, your daily Atlanta Falcons podcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. And guys, if you don't know me, I'm your very humble host, Aaron Freeman, a.k.a. Mr. Drew, a.k.a. Sirius Black, a.k.a. the Jolly Green Giant, a.k.a. the Iron that Sharp is the Iron, a.k.a. Mr. A.k.a. And of course, I've been covering the Falcons for too, too long. So, so long. Formerly at Falcfans.com, RIP, still going strong on this illustrious podcast. And I thank each and every one of you. That is an everyday or even the people that hate the AKAs. I appreciate you for watching or listening to this podcast as your first listen each and every day and to become an everyday so that you too can hate the AKAs, but still not put me down. All you got to do is subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Like you guys are going to complain about the AKAs all you want in the comments. I ain't going to stop doing them, but what we're going to do on today's episode, we've been talking quite a bit about, you know, some questionable bets that the Falcons are making this offseason. But today we're going to be talking about the good bets that the Falcons are making. Right? Yesterday we talked about, you know, the defense. Like, are, are they making good bets on that side of the ball? Eh, we'll see. But today we're talking about the bets that people should legitimately be excited about. And all of those bets are going to be basically front and center week one. Right. We kind of touched upon this when we did the schedule breakdown, but we you know we had to talk about, you know, the other 16 games on the schedule as well. So we didn't really take a deep dive on it, but I really do want to dig into it because I think the schedule makers were absolutely in their bag as they would say, or they went above and beyond by put pitting the Falcons against the Pittsburgh Steelers in week one, because it really puts all the bets and all these narratives that, you know, surround the Falcons front and center. And that first one we're going to talk about is, you know, the one that we talked about at the end of last year, which was all about the quarterback. We, we talked several times over the last five months about whether or not the Falcons were a quarterback away. And the Falcons are essentially telling the world that they believe that they're a quarterback away because that's basically the only position that they decided to upgrade this offseason. And they were just like, eh, well, we don't got to worry about anything else. We just We just got to get the quarterback situation figured out. Right. And that's the, you know, I, I know you guys are going to get mad and be like, well, what about this? Other? Like, okay, definitively. That they upgrade. Like you can, you know, whether you think Darnell Mooney's a better receiver than Mac Hollins is is up to you. But you know, I don't know if you're gonna be able to convince the world of that. But anyway, the Falcons spent a hundred million dollars on their quarterback guaranteed over the next two years by signing Kirk Cousins. And the Steelers went the complete opposite direction. I mean, they're basically committing one year of four point five million dollars, a little shy of four point five million dollars to both Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. And if you rewind the clock. To at least this podcast's comment section in back in February, as well as elsewhere, where people can provide their daily feedback as everydayers to this podcast. You know, when we were talking about Kirk Cousins is probably going to be the team's preferred option at quarterback, and so many of you guys were like, No, no, that's that's the wrong choice. Overpaying for Kirk Cousins is the wrong choice, and the Falcons should go cheap with either Russell Wilson or Justin Fields. Well, guess what? The Steelers went exactly down that road and now it's going to be sort of front and center right and we talked about then back in february and early march like you know the falcons going for the cheap option wasn't really an option for them just because the previous regime basically uh took the stance of let's kick the tires on this guy for a year and and then we'll see about the quarterback position and that you know contributed if not outright led to that coach getting fired and the new coach wasn't going to come in and Raheem Morris that is was going to come in and do the exact same thing and that's what's going to lead them down the road to Kirk Cousins right and you know you've seen the Falcons not only say we're not only going to solve our quarterback situation for the next two or three years by signing Kirk Cousins we're hoping that we've solved our quarterback situation for the next 10 years 
by drafting Michael Penix in addition to that. So they went hard on the, we are definitely not going for a one-year rental at the quarterback position. Meanwhile, the Steelers are. And those two strategies are going to be front and center week one, opposing, right? Who's going to win? And we, of course, all know that, you know, football games are a lot more complicated than who's your quarterback, right? And who wins and loses games is deeper than that. But, of course, that's not going to stop people from getting to the narratives, right? Like, that's what we're talking about, guys, right? And, you know, all those people insisting back in, in February and March that signing Kirk Cousins was the wrong plan, those people are definitely, if the Falcons find a way to lose this game in week one against the Steelers, against two cheap quarterbacks that many of those same people were advocating for the Falcons to go out there and get as alternative and better options than Kirk Cousins, those people will definitely not be very vocal about it. You know, come Sunday evening, September 8th, or Monday morning, you know, if the Falcons should, you know, somehow lose that game in week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers. But at the same time, the Falcons could sit there and say, hey, the $95.5 million that we committed to our quarterback position paid off for us because we walked away with a win, right? It's totally worth it if the Falcons walk away with a win. And so that's why it's so intriguing to sort of see if the Falcons can take care of business at home in the rocking Mercedes-Benz Stadium against the Steeler team with these two sort of diametrically opposed quarterback solving strategies, right? Both teams drafted the top two quarterbacks in the 2022 draft, Kenny Pickett, Desmond Ritter, didn't work out for them as long-term options. So they went in different directions to solve that problem. And we'll see whose strategy, at the very least, you know, helps get them a win in week one. We'll also talk about, you know, that strategy working with Kirk Cousins and how it's not just on Kirk Cousins, right? Like he's got to go out there and execute the offense that is given to him. And that's the other bet that the Falcons are making, which is that Zach Robinson is going to be a massive upgrade in terms of the play calling department. And we'll break that down as we continue today's Lock on Falcons. So, of course, we're talking about the Falcons schedule on today's episode. And, of course, you know, game time is going to help you take advantage of that very intriguing Falcon schedule because they're going to take the guesswork out of buying tickets thanks to killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, and views from your seat. And I love the views from your seat, right? When you're sitting here thinking about going to this week one matchup between the Falcons and Steelers and being able to preview exactly what view you're going to be able to have in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, in the app, on game time. And so you can start the picture, okay, when Russell Wilson is throwing those rainbows, what what angle that, you know, Clark Phillips or Mike Hughes or A.J. Terrell is going to be breaking up those downfield throws to George Pickens. And when Grady Jarrett is, you know, knifing through that Steelers offensive line to, to blow up Najee Harris in the backfield, what exact angle do I want to be able to – see those plays right and that's the beauty of game time they give you that preview with you know the views from your seat in the app so all you got to do to get those views and preview you know your angles for that week one matchup is download the game time app create an account and use code locked on nfl and you'll get 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on nfl that's l-o-c-k-e-d-o-n-n-f-l for 20 dollars off download game time app today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed so let's talk a little bit about the locked on sports today 24 7 streaming channel right here on youtube first of its kind as well as free amazon fire tv channels app um on your you know smart tvs everywhere and of course locked on sports today is giving you you know the biggest stories biggest headlines across all the sports all across the globe. And if you're looking for more local flavor, then check out Locked On Sports Atlanta's 24-7 streaming channel, as well as their free Amazon Fire TV channel app. And of course, you know, they're giving you all the latest with the Hawks, the Braves, the Bulldogs, and of course, our very beloved Atlanta Falcons that have never disappointed us at any point in the last, you know, quarter century for many of us that have been living on this planet. So uh, check it out. Locked On Sports today, Locked On Sports Atlanta, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, you know, the quarterback bet is going to be front and center, right? Quarterbacks get all the attention. When the team wins, 
They get all the credit. When the team loses, they get all the blame, right? But I would argue that the biggest bet that the Falcons are actually making this year is not really on Kirk Cousins, despite all the money that they spent on him. It's really on Zach Robinson being a massive upgrade as far as the play calling goes, right? We know Kirk Cousins is a capable quarterback, right? You know, the, you know, even even the people in my comment section back in February were like, could couldn't you know argue that Kirk stinks as they try to back then, but we don't really know what Zach Robinson is. First time play caller, right? It's only been really an assistant coach in the NFL for what five years, right? This is year six for him, I think. Um, and the expectation, despite you know the limitations, I guess you would call it the limited opportunities he had is that he's the next in line of these McVay protégés that's going to turn not only into a great play caller here in Atlanta, but potentially go on to be a great head coach. Like Atlanta, the perception is Atlanta is just a stopping point for Zach Robinson as he skyrockets, you know, to the moon, so to speak. Right. All right. We know that there are a lot of McVay protégés currently calling plays in the NFL, six of them, not counting Sean McVay himself currently. And then you can argue three more stem from that coaching tree because, you know, they coached under Zach uh, Taylor in Cincinnati or um, Matt LaFleur in Tennessee, like, you know, current Steelers offensive coordinator and former Falcons head coach Arthur Smith, right? And so this week one matchup pits the Falcons' new, brand new, the new hotness, uh, as uh, Will Smith would say, you know, in Zach Robinson versus old and busted in, in Arthur Smith, right? So once again, the schedule makers were in their bag when it came to these narratives, right? And so we'll, we'll get to see how far this offense has come under Zach Robinson right away, right? Because not only are they betting on the upgraded quarterback, but their play caller is going to be able to maximize all this top 10 talent that the Falcons have on offense. B. John Robinson, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts. Right? We, we, we were buying this time last year, we were all about positionless football and how Arthur Smith and his offense is going to have Bijan and Drake and Kyle Pitts cooking consistently this year. And unfortunately, that did not come to fruition, much to the chagrin of fantasy football experts everywhere. And we're hoping that Zach Robinson is going to be the champion of fantasy football managers across the globe because he's going to have all of those guys playing at a high level and reward all those guys, all those fantasy football experts that are going to tell you, hey, take these guys in the first round, take Kyle Pitts in round two, take Bijan top three, take, you know, Drake London at the end of the first round or wherever they wind up going. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about it later this summer with some of those fantasy football experts. But, you know, we're hoping that, like, you know, we don't care about fantasy football here on the podcast, but we know that when those guys are getting their touches, right, which is good for fantasy football, hopefully that's going to be a good thing for this Falcons offense. Because, you know, those guys' success this season is not going to be solely up to Zach Robinson, but it's going to Zach Robinson's going to be a big part of it because when you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know when you face the Atlanta Falcons, you got to stop three guys every single week, and every team after that is going to know there's three guys we got to stop, and if we can stop one or two of those guys, we can really shut down this Falcons offense. And if you're Zach Robinson, it's up to you to basically prevent teams from being able to stop those guys, right? We know Bijan's going to get his 20 touches per game. We know Drake's supposed to get his 10 plus targets a game. And Kyle Pitts is not going to be that far behind, probably averaging like eight targets a game. And I've mentioned in the past kind of the parallels to the vision of this Falcons offense is going to be very similar to what we saw from the Detroit Lions last year, right? Where 75% of their touches went to four players. You know, Jameer Gibbs, Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta. And you can really easily see analogs to B. John Robinson, Drake London, and, and Kyle Pitts with those three. And then the fourth guy being David Montgomery, who basically, you know, Tyler Algier is our David Montgomery. And so we know all four of those guys, you know, who are going to be touching the ball, you know, 30, 40, you know, but potentially 50 times a game combined every single week. We know all of those guys have the ability to put out that type of output that we saw from the Ben Johnson-led Detroit Lions, and that's why Ben Johnson was the hottest head coaching candidate in this last coaching cycle before, you know, surprising everybody by, you know, going back to Detroit. But we know, like, 
every team is going to be geared up to stop those four guys, so to speak. And a lot of these teams that we're facing, especially early in the season, are going to be particularly skilled at doing that because three out of our first four games are against teams that were top seven in the NFL in defense last year, at least measured by expected points added per play, right? Pittsburgh, Kansas City, New Orleans. You know, and unlike the Falcons, Pittsburgh and New Orleans actually tried to improve their defenses this offseason by signing free agents of consequence. You know, uh, Kansas City took a step back, but we know Steve Spagnuolo is one of the best defensive minds in football. And so Zach Robinson going toe to toe on Sunday night football against Spags is going to be, you know, must see TV, or at least we hope it is. Right now, Philadelphia is the fourth team that we opened up the season against and their defense wasn't particularly good. They were like bottom five last year, mostly because of how terrible they were in the second half of the season. But at least through the first half of the season, like the first seven or so games, they were the top 15 defense. And then they went out and hired, you know, Vic Fangio, who's widely considered to be, you know, alongside Steve Spagnuolo as like the best DC in football, has the best scheme in football. And then you couple that with the talent that, you know, it's weird when teams actually go out there and try to improve their defense. Uh, in the offseason, in a, in the talent that the Eagles added this offseason, you know, there's every reason to think that Philadelphia should, again, whether they actually do, time will tell, but they should be bounced back and be at least a top 15 defense again, if not a potential top 10 defense. And we've already discussed about, you know, in, in the past, Kirk's tendency to start slow, looking at his team win percentage. And of course, you know, I know people sit here and say, well, you know, Wins are not a quarterback stat, and I would agree with you. It's a team stat, and teams consist of more than just the quarterback, but we all know how this business works, right? This industry works where, as I said earlier, the quarterbacks get all the credit when you win, they get all the blame when you lose, and in this case, Kirk does, ten, at least even the stats show that September is not his best month for you know being the most efficient version of, of player. You you wonder a little bit, is he going to be even more prone to starting slow this year because of expectations that he's going to be limited in the preseason, limited in training camp and whatnot? So it's really going to be up to Zach Robinson. And then you, then you throw in the primetime game aspect of it and curse record there. Like, you know, like the schedule makers are, are doing everything like all things are pointing in the direction of the Falcons starting the season a little slow. And it's really going to be up to Zach Robinson to basically avoid that slow start by basically having this offense firing on all cylinders coming out of the gates, right? And you're going to need that supporting gas to supplement Kirk Cousins. Again, wh wherever you think Kirk Cousins falls, the slow September starts, the prime time stuff, whatever. But certainly he's not going to have, to, he's not going to be expected to do all the heavy lifting himself. And you're going to need Bijan and Drake and Algier and Pitts and Darnell Mooney and all these other guys to sort of raise the roof, as they say, <laughs> um, for this football team. And so there's no sh greater showcase to do that than against Pittsburgh's defense, especially when you have Arthur Smith on the opposite sideline. You know, and scoring points against Pittsburgh defense in that week one matchup, theoretically, probably will be a harder task for the Falcons offense than the Steelers offense scoring points against the Falcons defense. And I, I know, I, I know you guys are like Aaron, why you got to constantly take shots at defense uh, okay, guys. You know, I got, you know, Mr. Drew, I got to, I got to take shots when I at something for the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I can't really poke holes in, on the offense. So I, I got to take shots at the defense. So you, you know how I go. Um, but you know, if the Falcons score 17 points in that week one game, they're like, Ooh, that's going to be rough. That's going to be rough. But what if they drop a 30 burger in that week one game? And that's going to have that building a rock and that's going to get people really hyped. And, you know, that 30 burger could potentially be a great omen for the last bet that we're going to talk about on today's episode, which is the first bet that they made, which is the hiring of their head coach, which is that Raheem Morris is going to be a big upgrade in that arena. And we'll break that down as we wrap up today's Locked on Falcons. So, guys, it is winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. All you got to do is go on, head over to FanDuel, and new customers, you'll get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 150 bucks. Bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. You can bet on the NBA, the NHL. right? You can bet on Major League Baseball. You can bet on the upcoming NFL season if you're feeling you know, particularly hyped about the Falcon season, go bet on the over under nine and a half wins over under 
go check it out. Right? You want to bet on the upcoming NBA draft next month where the Atlanta Hawks hold the number one pick. Who do you think is going to be that guy? Right? You know, all you got to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and you can make every bet and every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So I don't know what tomorrow's episode is going to be because I have a bunch of guests coming on in the next couple of days. And I don't know if those episodes will be tomorrow's episode or later this week or possibly even next week's episode. So we'll see <laughs> uh, what tomorrow's episode is going to be. But we'll finish up today's episode again, talking about the bets that the Falcons are making. And one of those bets is on the head coach. And as I mentioned several times already, no, the expectation is that Dome is going to be a rockin' come week one, right? The energy in that building is going to be off the charts, given the expectations for this football team. The energy in that building for the home opener last year was off the charts. I think it's only going to level up this year, given the expectations for this football team. And that leads us to our last but not least bet that the Falcons are making. It's actually the first bet that the Falcons made this offseason, and that was hiring Raheem Morris as an upgrade to his predecessor, obviously the previous head coach in Arthur Smith, it's going to be patrolling that opposite sideline or at least maybe be up in the booth uh, on the opposite sideline. But you also have Mike Tomlin on that opposite sideline. And this is kind of a full Socro moment for um, Raheem Morris, right? You know, the student in Raheem Morris versus the master in Mike Tomlin. Because guess who Raheem, when he was first got his first NFL coaching gig back in like 2002 with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, who was sort of the older statement on that coaching staff, the DB's coach, Mike Tomlin. And then a couple of years later, you know, Raheem graduated from being a, a defensive quality control coach to an assistant defensive backs coach. You know, Mike Tomlin was still there. And then shortly thereafter, Mike Tomlin left to go on and be a very successful uh, DC in the Minnesota Vikings for one year before becoming a head coach for the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2007. You had a similar dynamic with Raheem and Jimmy Lake and sort of, you know, Raheem being the DB's coach and Jimmy Lake being the assistant coach and sort of, you know, now it's kind of come full circle for both of those guys. And we'll see where Jimmy Lake's career path goes, but he's hoping that, you know, Raheem can be that sort of beacon of stability for him that Mike Tomlin was for Raheem, right? Because, you know, Tomlin has been not only that beacon, but the epitome of stability for 17 years now as, as an NFL head coach. We've we've heard before in the past when Arthur Blank, like 10, 15 years ago, talking about the Steelers organization as, you know, one of these very stable and successful organizations and wanting the Falcons to be that. And now he has his version of Mike Tomlin and Raheem Morris, right, that we're hoping, you know, that 17 years from now, we'll be talking about Raheem Morris in a similar light as, you know, having a guy that's, you know, one a Super Bowl and never had a losing season in, in, in 17 years or whatever the the number is for, for Mike Tomlin. And that's what we're that's what we're shooting for. We're basically shooting for Raheem to have a similar sort of career path as Mike Tomlin with that sort of stability and, and that sort of consistency. And you know, all the worries about oh, you, you're not supposed to hire a defensive minded head coach nowadays. And it's like, well, you know, Mike Tomlin's the kind of the exception to that, along with like guys like Bill Belichick and whatnot. And I don't have a lot of I have, you know, I haven't done a lot of research on it, just, you know, quick search around profootballreference.com or whatever, just looking at a handful of coaches. But I, like, part of me is curious, like, is there a correlation between a coach that wins a Super Bowl and a, and a coach that wins their first game as a head coach? It feels like that should be. And just looking at a couple of guys that, you know, have recently gone to Super Bowls or in the past have gone to Super Bowls, like you look at Mike Tomlin, what was his first game in Pittsburgh in 2007? They blew out the Cleveland Browns 34 to 7. Sean McVay, right? His first game in 2017 with the Rams, 46 to 9 win over the Colts. Right? You go back to Pete Carroll, right? 31 to 6 win in his first game in Seattle against the 49ers. I, I know Pete Carroll had a previous stop in New England. We don't count that. Just like we don't count Andy Reid and the Eagles in his first game losing to the Cardinals back in 1999. But hey, in Kansas City, his first game, they blew out the Jaguars 28 to 2. Right? And you talk about, you contrast that with Arthur Smith, our former head coach's first game against uh, all, uh, also a, a new head coach in, in Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni 
and the Eagles won that game 32 to 6. Right. And they would go on to be in the Super Bowl a year later. And, you know, Arthur Smith would be out of a job two years later. And so, again, I probably if I did more research, I'd find that these are probably a handful of examples of this. And there isn't that strong a correlation between Super Bowl winning and Super Bowl losing the head coaches. And, you know, the record, because I, I already looked up, you know, Zach Taylor and Kyle Shanahan and they didn't win their first games. So not saying that this is the end all be all, but. Going back to the point made earlier about Zach Robinson and sort of putting 30 points on one of the best defenses in the NFL, could you imagine the Falcons putting 30 points and, and getting Raheem his first win? And again, that energy in that stadium is going to be through the roof. It is going to be sky high. Right? It'll change the vibes here in the city of Atlanta if the Falcons can walk away from this game with a win for Raheem Morris again for all the reasons we've talked about, because of the quarterback concerns, because of the play calling concerns, because, you know, again, the student and Raheem Morris going up against his his teacher and, and Mike Tomlin and, and sort of, you know, now, now the student has become the teacher, the, has become the master, so to speak. And for all these reasons, like, again, there's a, so many narratives involved in this game. And as I said many times already, you know, the schedule makers were in their bag when they came up with this because, like, the, the narratives – or just mm, mm, chef kiss, right? And so, you know, I'm not a big believer in, in sort of overreacting to week one, but it's just it's just going to be so easy to do, right? If they win this game, and for all the reasons that we've pointed out, like it means every decision that the Falcons have made this offseason was the correct decision. And if they lose this game, it means every decision that the Falcons made this offseason was the wrong decision. It's it's just so easy to do my job when I can just basically just mail it in for the rest of the season because it's like that rapid reaction, you know, Sunday, September 8th at, you know, 7 o'clock or whatever. It's like, it's like this is it. Like the, the Falcon season in a nutshell, right? everything rests on this game. Again, I don't, I don't really believe that, but you know what I'm saying. You, you know how this works, right? We we all know, right? Fans and and negative Nancy podcasters alike know that 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 week one overreaction, you know, that Monday is is the biggest day of overreaction in in the football sports world. And so we're gonna lean into it, baby, because you know it's all about tremendous content here on this illustrious podcast. And so we will absolutely lean into that especially if they win. And if they lose, it'll be like, well, they'll get it back next week, right? That, that's how it works. We all know how that that's how it works. So, you know, it's not going to be easy for the Falcons to get it back next week because you can argue it's an even tar- harder task to go on the road on primetime on Monday Night Football and beat the Eagles and come back home against the Chiefs on Sunday Night Football, right? So, like, this week one game has so much built into it, right? Like, it's, you know, if you're 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 looking at one and zero start is very different from an zero and two zero and one start because an zero and two start or zero and one start I'm sorry can't talk zero and one start could easily turn into an zero and three start and a one and zero start gives you the hope especially if this game goes you know as swimming if, if the Falcons can win this game thirty four to seven or something like that then that's going to give you a lot of confidence going into those week two and week three matchups and they become a lot more winnable games than they appear to be right now so. We'll see. We'll see what happens with the Falcons, but it is to me notable that this week one matchup is kind of the perfect matchup for the Falcons because it just puts all these bets front and center, the quarterback, the play caller, the head coach front and center for this football team. And, you know, the entire season revolves around this one game in Atlanta against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, the Steeler fans are going to do their best to, to infiltrate. They travel well. They're, they're everywhere. To Nitra Batiste. Uh, host of uh, Locked On Sports Atlanta, you know, is a Steelers fan. So that's proof of it. But uh, we'll see what happens with the Falcons. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of the week. Um, we'll see what tomorrow's episode brings. Don't know off the top of my head right now. We'll see. But uh, that's going to do it for us, guys. I really appreciate you tuning in. Even those of you that skip the AKAs, um, you know, we'll do it again tomorrow. And you'll have another opportunity to catch him tomorrow as your first listen make sure you check out locked on sports atlanta locked on sports today locked on nfl as your second listen this is all part of locked on podcast network your team every 